Hello and welcome to SS Unitech Susil this side and this is continuation of Azure Data Factory interview questions and answers. So recently one of my friend has attended interview with Tata Consultancy Services. So this question was asked there. So here we need to copy the data as per the file size. So what does it mean? We will be having one of the input storage that will be your Azure Blob storage and here I have created one container that is the input container. So we need to copy the files from the input container to the output container of the blob storage. So as you can see this is the input container and this is the output container. Under that inside the input we are having multiple files but we need to check about the file size. If the file size is less than 1 KB then we are having three folders inside the destination. So if your file size is less than 1 KB, then you need to copy those files inside the folder of the 1 KB. If your file size is between 1 KB to 2 KB, then we need to copy that files inside the 2 KB folder. And if the file size is more than 2 KB, then we need to copy those files into the more than 2 KB folder. So like these three folders will be available inside the destination and we need to copy as per the file size of the input. So let me quickly go into the Azure blob storage and I will show you there. So I am under the input container. So we are having these four files and we can also check the size. So the size of the India file and UK file is 1 KB. So these two files will be loaded into 1 KB folder. Park file is having 2 KB so it should be going to load into 2 KB folder and here for the USA it is 3 KB so it will be going to load into the more than 2 KB folder. Let me quickly go back there. So these four files I have already uploaded into the input container. Let me quickly go into the output folder and inside the output container we can see it is having three folders first for the 1 KB. 2 KB and more than 2 KB. So we want to load the data as per the file size. Let me quickly show you these folders are having only this file which is a test.xlsx file because we cannot create the empty file inside the blob storage so that's why I have created by using this test.xlsx. So as of now we can assume like this is the empty one. Let me quickly go inside the Azure Data Factory and try to create a new pipeline for implementing this. So I would say you should be going to understand each and every point step by step because this may be a little bit tricky one. So first we want to read inside the input containers how many files are there. So first we have to get all these files. So for getting that we have to use the get metadata activity. So we can simply drag and drop here and after that we can go inside the settings directly and inside the settings we have to select the data set. So let me quickly create a new data set. So our source is the Azure blob storage so we can select it. Click on continue. Files are delimited text. Click on continue. Then we need to select the link service. I have already created the link service so I'm going to use the same. Let me click on browse and after that we will see two folders first is input and second is output. So we need to get all the files under the input so we can specify the path up to this input folder. Let me click on OK and first row as header we can mark this as true and we can click on OK. So what this delimited text for data set will be doing it will be going to point that particular folder location that is input. What property and field list we want we want the child item from here. So what child item will do child item will be returning all those four files. Let me try to debug it. So here we can verify like those four files are coming or not. So this is in queue we can wait. We can check the output of this. So here under the child item we can see like this is the first file. This is the second file. Similarly we are having all those four files. So till now we are good. Now next we want to loop through with all these four files for checking the file size. So for looping through we have to use the for each activity. And we can connect this for each activity from this get metadata activity with the success one. 
so we can simply go inside the for each go to the settings and under the settings we can see the items so we can click on add dynamic content so we want to loop by using the child item of the get metadata activity so here we can see the child items we can simply select and click on ok so this for each loop will be going to loop through four times because it is having four files now under the activity we can click on this pencil symbol and we want to configure under the for each activity what we have to do so first time we will be receiving the first file name so if we are having the file name then we want to check the size of that file so again for checking the size of the file we have to use the get metadata activity so we can use the get metadata activity here so this will be pointing get metadata to simply we can go into the setting and we need to create the data set but this time you have to remember file names are coming from the for each loop so we need to make this data set as dynamic and we will be receiving the file name from the for each activity so let me click on this new and it should be going to point on the azure blob stories and then delimited text click on continue here we can select the link service and this is for the delimited text or we can call this as file name data set something like this then we can click on this browse and it should be pointing to input location and we should not be selecting any of this file because those files will be getting dynamically by using the for each activity we can mark this first row as header and here we don't see option for adding the dynamic content so we can simply click on ok and it will be going to create this data set here we can go inside the new and under the new here we can see option for the parameter so we can add one parameter and this parameter we can simply say like the file name and once we have selected this go to the connections and inside the connections inside the file path we can see this file name so this file name we should be getting from the parameter that we have created we can click on ok once we make this change inside the data set we should be see inside this get metadata activity too it is asking the file name so this file name we should be getting from the for each activity we can go into the add dynamic content and here we can see this items dot name so this property we can use and click on ok now we can debug it and we will be seeing so okay it is asking your field list should not be blank so what we want from this get metadata to here we need two attributes so we can click on this new and here first we want item name so we can select the item name so that will be your file name and the second attribute that should be the size so here we can go in the downside and we should see the size so this I have selected and after that let me try to debug it and we will see the output of these two so this get metadata activity 2 will be executed four times because we are having four files inside the get metadata 1 and for each will be executing four times so that's why get metadata activity 2 will be executing four times and each time will will be seeing about the file size and the file name so we can check so here we can see get metadata 2 is executed four times and inside the for each if we can check the input so the item count is four that's why we can see those four items here so one two three and four now let me quickly show you about the get metadata activity 2 so the file size that we can see the employee.uk.csv so this file is having total 149 bytes because the size is returning in the bytes second file we can see and it is having 1237 for the path so as per the condition this file should be loaded into the 2kb folder similarly we can check for this one so for the USA it is 2453 
so it is 2.4 kb so this file should be loaded into more than 2 kb folder till now we are good we can use the copy data activity next so copy data activity will be copying the actual files we can select with the success one and here first we need to check how we can get the source value so for the source value we can use the same data set that we have created for the get metadata activity 2 so that is ds file name because this is going to point on the same file at the source so that file we want to copy simply we can select that file so this is the file next it should be asking about the file name so again we can get this file name from the for each and we can use the name property and click on ok so we are good at the source now inside the sync we need to create one more data set and this data set again will be dynamic first let me try to create that then i will explain so we can select the delimited text here we can select the link service then we can browse to the output folder and inside the output folder we are having these three folders we don't know on which location we will be copying the file so we can simply click on ok without selecting anything inside the directory so this time we will be making this directory and the file name both as in dynamic let me click on ok and we'll try to make that here we can click on open now here inside the parameter we should be creating two parameters first for the file name and second size we can go into the connections and inside the connections we should be seeing this directory so this directory should map with the size and this file name should map with the file name so till now we are good so simply inside the output we are having the size folder that we can see we can go inside the output and we will be seeing the size folder and next we can see the file name so we, that will be copying simply go inside the pipeline and inside the pipeline here we can see it is having the file name so file name we can simply get from the activity output of the get metadata activity 2 with the file name option so we can scroll down here we can see the item name and we can click on ok so this will be the file name now next will be the size so inside the size remember it is having values in bytes so we have to write the expression so first we have to check about the file size so how we can get the file size so simply we can go inside the activity output and we can use the size property of the get metadata activity too but before that we have to use the if condition and inside the if condition we can choose the size property of the get metadata too so here we can scroll down side and here we can see the size so we can select the size now if this size value is less than 1000 bytes then that file should be loaded inside the 1kb folder so again we have to use one more function that is the less if this value is less than 1000 then what we want we want 1 kb as an output next again we need to check so we can use the if condition and here we can check if less we can copy the first one the same thing and this time this value should be less than 2000 then we want as an 2kb if everything will not be as expected then we want this more than 2kb in the output so simply we can say if the file size is less than 1000 bytes then that file should be going to load inside the 1kb folder if the size is less than 2000 so 1000 is already covered in the first one so it will be going to copy into the 2kb otherwise that will be copy into the more than 2kb simply we can click on ok so once we have selected all these so everything looks good now we can execute and we can 
well did the output so simply we can debug it now we can see this pipeline got executed successfully let me quickly go into the output folder of the blob stories check inside the 1kb it should be having two files of the employee one for the india and second for the uk so as we can see india and uk let me go into the 2kb it should be having pakistan file that we can see next we can see more than 2kb so it should be having file for the us as we can see so the files are going to load as per the file size i know this is a little bit tricky if it's not very clear you can watch the video again and thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos and please share to your friends thank you so much